for the story, I like the comic book thing in the middle, right? I mean, does that make sense? It's like the meat shaft. Sure. Yeah. All right. That's fine. All right. What episode are we on, John? Oh. Uh, I think 22. That sounds about right. Yeah. All right. That sounds about well, right. I have to say then, welcome to episode 22 of the Geek Savants. I'm Dave DeWatch. I am super ugly. Grant Miller. No Brian Robots? But no Brian no. Robots. <laughs> yeah, there's Brian Robots. <laughs> and I'm Ron Zorb. <laughs> Brian Robots is here. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. good. All right. Well, let's uh, let maybe let's get into our uh, comic book discussion. Yeah. Do you mind if I uh, pour myself another drink before we do this? No. Go ahead. A clean break. You'll see the empty Dave spot. Got it. Ah, okay. Good. good. He's oh, yeah. gone. My shades. Never revealed too much. This is riveting. Luckily, I've learned how to edit pretty well. So. This is this is the top of my penis. What? <laughs> so, Teen Titans go. Yeah. Uh, Starfire's little bug animal, Silky. Yeah. Raps. This is on the the TV night two, I think, where they have Batman watching TV. This is one of the sh- little shows that comes up while Batman's watching TV. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Go, go, go towards the end. No, just let it play. Okay. Okay, there you go. Right there. You done with Silky? <laughs> that was pretty did, awesome. Did they create Silky for that show? Silky's yeah. out of comics, right? Do I need to go on eBay and find Silky's first? Yeah, get the first go get the first appearance of Silky. Yes. Yeah, I actually would. I actually would. Let me if I can go on my uh, magic phone and find out if I if that's. I, I don't think the real Silky's as cute as that Silky, but yeah, he's out there. Okay. Is he? You think Silky is in the DC universe? I think so. No way. No fucking way. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, how much fucking weird shit's in the DC universe? There's a ton. I mean, just even like call back to last episode with fucking Robert Venditti. There's some weird shit in the DC universe that they just fucking like roll with all the time. Oh, I can't wait to listen to that. It's riveting. Okay. Never mind. Aha! (laughs) Silky is a larva created by Killer Moth adopted Titans in the animated series. Killer Moth is great. Yeah, 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 I love this show. I'm so, I want I, you can watch as much as you want, Dave, and then I will openly discuss all kinds of shit with you about that show. I've watched a million episodes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we it's, we done with uh, Star versus the Forces of Evil, and and uh, before that, it was uh, Gravity Falls. We're just looking for a cool, fun, dumb show to watch, and t- it's the best. Yeah. Well, we're gonna watch the regular show, and then there's one called Almost Close by that same dude on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Because we need to like map. Regular show is one of my favorites. Which one? Regular show? Oh, it's brilliant. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, we just started that too. So we're going to watch both of those and then we can talk about them. Yeah, th- those uh, shows where they do the 10 minute cartoons, I really like that format. To where it's yeah, it's like, like the, 10 and 10. There's two yeah. broken up. Yeah. yeah. And what's good about that Teen Titans Go is that like, it is definitely got reoccurring shit going on in it, you know, mm-hmm. and like the writing is fucking hilarious. The characters are hilarious. Like by the time you get through a couple seasons, you know exactly they just basically can ride off of their like little weird things that each character does is like a whole storyline sometimes. Yeah. Robin is fucking incredible on that show. Oh, yeah. You know He's what's incredible. crazy? We should probably have a whole episode just dedicated to Cyborg. 
That fucking character's <laughs> been like the Doom Patrol, the Teen Titans, the Justice League, and every single fucking time. And yet I don't like him still. Isn't that great? Know, How is that a, possible? Why is that even a thing? Like, How is it that the only cyborg that I really like is in Teen Titans Go? That's How right, is yeah. that possible? <laughs> that's right. I don't understand it. I don't understand Where, where can uh, listeners watch Teen Titans Go? Teen Titans Go is on Hulu right now. Uh, it's yeah. probably not on DC Universe or uh, HBO Max. It's a Cartoon it, Network show, so you yeah, should be... It's a Cartoon Network show. Right. On Hulu, oh, I, I believe you can get every single episode, though. I mean, I, there's... Cool. Yeah. I uh, just uh, watched it. I've only watched it here and there, like, you know, just randomly but I, I now i want to watch 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 it watch watch yeah, yeah. Uh, on a dc universe they have like a smaller version like their younger versions of teen titans go they're like three minute clips instead of oh. 10 and they're like younger looking characters it, no. but it's the same kind of comedy and stuff like that the um Not i just good. watched the fantasy island epi- or the island adventure island I- adventure it's a f- it was a five part like ep- like thing and in it, <clears throat> sorry, they get shipwrecked. They go on a three-hour cruise. They get shipwrecked. They do a Gilligan's Island parody, Fantasy Island parody, a Predator wow. parody, a Jurassic Park <laughs> parody. Like, they throw every kind of island thing in there, and it is fucking insanely hilarious. Like, the Fantasy Island one is incredible, and the Jurassic Park one is really fucking great, too. Hey, this is uh, off subject. Did you guys watch the new uh, uh, Fantasy Island movie? Yep. No. Did you? you did. Was it bad? I saw it in the theater. It was one of the last movies before fucking COVID, COVID. Yeah. shut it down. Um, it was it was entertaining. I think I talked about it. It was. It was I don't fun. know if you did. We would have talked. I just. I just time. watched. I watched two movies that were actually very very good. If this is now a sidebar sidebar. Sidebar. Uh, I watched Doctor Sleep which is the sequel to The Shining. And it's which, on HBO Max right now, right? Which is real. I don't fucking care about fucking HBO Max, you son of a bitch. None of us have it but you. Well, I'm only well. saying this because if people actually want to hear your opinion and then they want to stream it, I can tell them it's on HBO Max right now. That's all. So go to Dave's house. Now, anyway. I'm not paid by HBO Max. I saw that in the theater too. Did you? Yeah. I loved it. Did you yeah, like it? Good. You know what I I liked about it? Here's the thing. The two movies that I'm going to talk about, both were uh, sequels, and both the originals were horror movies, but the sequels were actually not horror movies, and they were more of like, uh, look, if I just said Dr. Sleep was a superhero movie, would you agree with me? Yeah. So in the book, it's... (laughs) The the book's really good, um, but it is very close to the movie. Um, Oh, good. They did do a good job. They'll, they changed the ending in the, um, in the movie. Uh, it, the book, of course, explains shit way better. Dude, the, uh, the stuff with Danny and um, the Lewis Gossett character. That's uh, not Lewis Gossett. That's Scatman or, Crothers. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dick Halloran. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's, a, that's, a, that's a Jew man racist. I right? know. Yes. So racist. <laughs> it's just a bald black dude, okay? That's what I'm talking I mean, about, Paul Blackman. In the book, they go through The Shining, like, and they break that shit down. Oh. They tell it. They tell they, they tell Halloran's backstory, and it's fucking crazy, and it's so good. And that's I wish they had put that. Yeah, that would be. In, but the movie was it, good. It's really a lot of like, imagine like Jean Grey, Emma Frost type of like, where it's all this like you're. It's all these like telepathic mind type like, type of feelings like. And they're, yeah, okay, yeah. But it, like, I, I got the vampire bit of it, but then it was so power-based. Like, everything was like, they had a team. One was the pusher, and one was the this, and one was the that. And it's like, it was yeah. fucking crazy. I liked it a lot. And you know what I really enjoyed about it was the fucking direct callbacks to The Shining. I fucking yeah. loved it. And I loved, dude, they had an actress as Shelley Duvall. They had an actress as Scatman Crothers. They had an, uh, not an actress, an actor. They had an actor who played Jack Torrance. And it was fucking Henry Thomas played Jack Torrance. It was so good. Henry Thomas was the kid, right? From the original Shining, right? No, he, Henry Thomas is the guy from E.T. He yeah. was in uh, oh, okay. Haunting of Hill House, that show that on, uh, what is it, Netflix? Is that what that show was on? Yeah. Okay. 
<coughs> I'm very coffee today. I don't know why. Uh, it's because you're. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. So that, uh, but yeah, I thought it was really good because like they had Henry Thomas be Jack Torrance, but they didn't really like go full on like show him like right full on. They kind of had him sideways profile shots, and it was really interesting because they they use the overlook in a really cool way. I I thought yeah. it was just a great sequel. And then the other one I watched. Happy Death Day to You, the sequel to Happy Death Day. Did okay, you watch so that? First, first, first one's great. Yes, the first the one Scott, is great. Scott Bell, the creator of Deadpool, made that movie. He wrote the screenplay. And have you watched number two? No. It's incredible. I was what so, was it's so good. I'm so blown away by it. Is, Dude, is it very Groundhog Day? Okay, so the first one, yes, is basically Groundhog Day, but a girl is like being stalked by a killer over the campus or whatever, their school. She has to figure out who the killer is, stop the killer, and then that's how I believe she breaks the cycle. But the yep. second one turns into a whole fucking like time, tr- like parallel universe thing where it turns out that the reason she was in the Groundhog's Day is because some dude, Dave, do you remember the Asian guy that keeps coming into the room in the beginning? Yeah. He is working on an experiment that, like, it has this reactor thing that when it went off, that's what caused her to go into her time loop. And then what it is is that, like... It's not even a horror movie. It's a... No, it's... Now it's like a... I mean, it's still... Well, here's the thing. I'll give you the basic plot. Like, they have to... First off, they have to, like, stop the... The Asian guy is now the guy that's in the loop in the beginning. Okay? All of a sudden, he's in a loop. So then they figure out, okay, it's this machine. So we need to, like, turn this machine on to like set everything right again. Okay, let's do it. What happens is they send her to another dimension, a parallel dimension that is very similar to the one that she's in, except for there's slight variations. But now she has to go and live that day all over again. But things are different. So the killer's not the same. Her mom is alive. Like it's all these things. And she also has to then go to the Asian guy and be like, look, motherfucker, you just sent me here and we need to get me back to my dimension. So it's like a whole dimensional like tra- like traveling thing. It's fucking awesome. So I was worried that that movie was going to be bad and that's why I haven't seen it. Did right. You, did you stream it or did you buy it or did you... I have a friend that... Um, I believe it's on HBO right now. Not HBO Max, motherfucker. But I believe it's on HBO. I saw it on Hulu, so it has to be on HBO. But um, the... I have a friend who has like, what he does is he, you know, when you get a DVD and it has a code that says download this digital code. He just gives you the code. Yeah. And it's like, no, no, he just gives me access to his like account. So I get to watch all the like movies that he puts into his account. So he just, he had all these new movies. Hey bros, Scoob is on HBO Max right now. (laughs) We should do a podcast about it. Wait, don't we? Uh, I, I do. I do want to talk a little bit more about Fantasy Island. Okay. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. I am. I'm sorry. So when I was watching it in the theater, I, I was thinking this this looks very lost, like it, it, the setting and everything. I Hang was. On, let me get, I got to find the mute button. Island? I got to find the mute button. Hang on, go ahead. All right, I'm over <laughs> it right now. I'm hovering over it. So, so, so I'm watching. I'm in the theater. I'm watching Fantasy Island, and I'm thinking this is probably going to be a shitty movie. Okay, but it, it looks like Lost, so I'm starting to get into it. And and they've got like this group that's kind of like the others, and it's got a guy that's kind of like the Man in Black, and I'm like, well, this is pretty cool. Then they've got a whole underground thing that's just like the pool in fucking Lost, and like the magic water. So it's like, eh. so for me, the Fantasy Island movie is like a better Lost ending. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I can't believe that that's where this went after all of that i can watch a lost that i like the ending on <sighs> exactly <laughs> fuck yeah fuck yeah john mute john yes two thumbs up two thumbs up two fingers up ron give him something uh, oh, <laughs> the beast. it's the, the beast. lost ending i always wanted <laughs> i love it i love it <laughs> Oh, watch that shit. What? I can't hear you, Grant. What'd you say? I'm sorry. Fuck. Can he mute everyone at the same time? Like a little. I can, I oh. can Dave. So don't uh. fucking don't fucking test me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, good. That's. I mean, but do you recommend that movie? Because it sounds terrible. It's, oh. <laughs> don't expect. Don't expect it to be a masterpiece. But it's a fun. Ooh. 
I'm Grant. Cool I expect it to be a masterpiece. <laughs> it's not a terrible movie. <laughs> John said it was a masterpiece. That's right. Jesus. Well, John, you do love your expectations. Low. If, if Grant didn't like Dr. Sleep, I wouldn't take your fucking review of it. And I'll tell you why. You <laughs> love seeing superpowers on, on any kind of celluloid, and it, 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 it blurs your vision. It really does. You loved Heroes. Don't fucking lie. You fucking love the dumbest shit because people... Oh, f- my God. And yeah, yet, don't mute me either, fucker. I've... Don't do it. <laughs> oh, my God. But speaking of superpowers, ooh, segue. This episode, we've, we've talked for a long ass time now, but this I... episode... Yeah. We are going to uh, talk about... Let's keep it under 15, boys. <laughs> what? This is our mini episode. We got a mini episode. Everything's got to be 15 minutes or else we're just not doing it right. I thought you said we're at 115 minutes. We're at 135 minutes. Three hours uh, of podcasting. Look, so this episode, uh, the main, the, the meat of the, 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 the sandwich was going to be talking about our favorite single issues. And by that, we had qualifiers. Ron, tell me what the qualifiers were. This isn't my episode. This is Brian's, who oh! conveniently isn't here right now because he doesn't want to take credit for it. Well, All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what, what did you say? I think it was something like a single issue comic story. Your favorite but not, one. but not an annual, which was really hard because there's a lot of single stories that are. Yeah, right. no, no special issues or annuals or or anything. It had to be just like in in a regular run of a comic. Could it be a single issue in a miniseries? No, uh, we cut out miniseries. I think yeah, yeah. this is tough. Okay. This was tough. I, I had a hard time in one sense, and I'll tell. Go, we can get into it, and then I'll kind of tell you why I. I there was like a mini series kind of vibe thing that I was having a hard time with. Go ahead. Okay, so who I, wants to go first? I'll, I'll go first. I'll just throw one out. Um, I came up with. Uh, I really wanted to do a Marvel uh, series, and I couldn't find a single issue that like floated my boat. Everyone was talking about Marvel, so I went the other way and I went with DC. Mm-hmm. I went with DC. I went with a Flash issue. Which that, one? Uh, it, it was it was part of the Jeff Jones run. It was Flash Volume Two, number two thousand twelve. Two thousand and twelve? Or no, no, number number two twelve in two thousand four. I'm sorry. Um, and it was the Mirror Master single issue. Um, Jeff Jones he did this in Flash, and he did it in the Avengers. But it was one of those things where he takes the, the rogues galleries of whoever uh, the, the hero is he's writing and he elevates the, the subject matter to where they should be current day. And this was just something, there was another one uh, that I had that, uh, that was uh, an honorable mention. And I almost liked the honorable mention more. It was, it was Flash 182, but um, this one focuses on Mirror Master and then the other one focused on um, on uh, Captain Cold. But what I really like about this Mirror Master uh, is I didn't see it coming and I really, really loved it. I, I just thought, wow, what a fucked up origin story. And he did that throughout his, his uh, rogues gallery run on The Flash. He just rewrote everyone's uh, and contemporized uh, all the villains' origin stories. Um, There's the Captain Cold one. That, so this, the reason that this one got... The cover. the cover is so good. It's such a great cover, but I also, I don't know how you guys feel about Scott Collins who drew this issue. He didn't draw. Oh, it. he didn't do this Mirror Master He one. didn't do that one. Mm. Right, which is kind of like, eh, it's not as good. But also, Ethan Van Sliver did the cover and he's canceled. So and he I is canceled. Like he is definitely canceled. That guy's a douche. God, what a douche. What a Why? Douche. Yeah, that's a thing though. Like, I think that like... You could get out of your own way, maybe, and fucking be a good artist and not be a dick, but whatever. Anyway, I believe he's gone the Trump route. I, is he a Trumper? I don't know. He's, he's well, definitely he's a, Gucci. He's a comic skate guy. And, and Oh, okay. He's a, he's a women shouldn't be in comics guy and don't make my characters black guy, right? Yeah. He's like, a, why are you going to supplant like, a minority into my character? Yeah. Or whatever the fuck it is. I, I don't know. Whatever it is. Whatever those people like... It's all right, because really, if you look at him, he's just sucking this dude's dick anyway. Look at this motherfucker, Brian Boland. Yeah. God yeah. damn, Brian Boland is good. Yeah, okay, so I would say that now looking back on this, I have to say Scott Collins 
as the interior artist and Brian Boland as the cover artist. I like them both equally, but I do think that I would have to go with this one. Now you've saved me. I would go with this one and I'll tell you, I'll give you my argument why, because dude, this honestly redefined Captain Cold. Yeah. Like Captain Cold was kind of just a meh. And once you got into the Johns Collins run with Captain Cold, like, I mean, this is the reason he's on the Legends of Tomorrow TV show or on Flash. It's because this run of him reinvented him enough to make him such a fucking interesting character. Almost like, I don't want to say the Luther of Flash, but like he's like now one of the badder villains in the Flash world in terms of just his kind of the stature of him and the way he deals with the flash, you know? What I love about his Captain Cold though too is he he knows he's a fucking villain. He knows that right. he's like, you know, he's he's on the wrong side of the law and he knows it, but he also doesn't kill unless it means something to him. Like he's not gonna just like the Joker everyone. He, you know what I mean? He's not gonna just kill r- random people. He wants to fucking kill for revenge because he's 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 been done dirty. And so, like, that's why I kind of love that Captain Cold. He has a moral compass. And sometimes, depending, you know, after that issue, you could play him as a hero. And you could play him in Legends of Tomorrow, like you said, John, as a hero, even though you know he's eventually going to fuck you over. And, and back to that Mirror Master, the reason I liked it is it touched on some fucking dark shit and it really yeah, wasn't he like abused or wasn't there so what was the yeah story? he was like in a uh he was in a uh, um uh, uh, like an orphanage and kids were getting molested and then one of the kids tried to molest him and he he basically murdered that kid and as he's choking him out underwater all he's seeing is his own mirrored reflection back at him and he almost like kills himself and then he kind of like loses his soul and loses his way and then just realizes he's really good at killing. And then the government hires him. He becomes this fucking awesome dude that then becomes like a drug addict. And then it ends with him fucking snorting coke off of a mirror. And you're like, wow, that's why they call him Mirror Master. And you're like, wow, what the fuck am I reading, man? Crazy fucking thing, you know? Um, I thought that Jeff Johns like, excelled at taking minor characters and making them excellent A-list characters. But every time Jeff Johns wrote an A-list character, I didn't love it. So I think that Jeff Johns did great with villains because no one gave a shit about them until Jeff Johns started touching them. Not in the- Well, the, yeah, the, I mean, on the Flash for sure. Like flat, the wow. beauty of that Johns Collins Flash is that Johns reinvented all of Flash's like rogues gallery. Like, like- Turned him into some of the best, like, coolest characters in comic books. Do you think and, part and, of that is, is because some of them were some of the, like, shitty and worst characters? And so they came right. up from there? Right. Like, Rainbow zero, Raider, zero Trickster, like, stuff like that. Yeah. It's like Dr. Sleep. It's like, it's like no one has any expectation for it because The Shining was so fucking good. And then a uh, good... <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we're not going to listen to Dave talk <laughs> shit about needed. me. Yeah, no, we're not going to listen to Dave and talk shit about my movie that I like. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 right. no, no. I'm just saying you didn't have any expectations going into it, so it was good. Oh, I'm sorry. I should, I'll should. i reverse mute you then. I'll make you louder. I'm sorry. Thanks. Yes. Right All right, who wants to go uh, next? Ron. All right. Mine is uh, Archie's Comics number uh, 13. No. Are you fucking asshole? Archie, I was man. like, oh shit, Ron picked a fucking. I was like, I did not pick that one. No, it's uh, uh, Uncanny X Men 183. And that's the one, yep, right there with uh, Colossus and uh, Marco Kane. Or Kane Marco, right? Kane Marco. Kane Marco. Yeah. yeah. That was uh, a great issue. Uh, yeah, I, I, rereading it though, because I, I, one, I didn't realize it. This was in 84. Like I thought this wow. came later than that. Like I read this. I know all these Romita ones seem so much later, but they are not later yeah. at all. <laughs> no way. So th- this actually happens. It takes place after. Um, oh God. Secret, Secret Wars. Wars. Right after Secret Wars, and uh, we will be they, discussing that on our pop up episode of Secret Wars. So, so Colossus, of course, falls in love with some spoilers. <laughs> Don't spoil then, uh, episode eight of our uh, podcast. <laughs> of so, so he comes back. He, he has to tell Kitty Pride that like he fell in love with this chick, right? Right. And 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 the thing is, so 
Kitty starts having emotional issues. She, she wants to get away from the, the X-Men for a while. Um, Logan Wolverine is going to play like, you know, uncle kind of show Colossus that he needs to chill with what he's doing for such a young girl. And that's the part that gets now that I'm older. Kitty Pride was only 13 or 14. And Colossus yeah, but wasn't was Peter years. was no, he was, he was in his 20, he's 20 years old in this. He takes him to a bar. Oh, he takes him to a bar, <laughs> and that's where they meet. Yeah, Juggernaut huh. in his street clothes. And that now is she like, 13 or four? No, she's older than that. I, I think, I think uh, Wolverine says she was 14 in this. I think that's better than yeah. so. It's, it's like, what is wrong? And yeah, now just reading wow. it is still wrong, <laughs> but anyways. So um, Wolverine's going to teach Colossus a, a lesson, right, for, for what he's done, breaking a girl's heart. But he happens to bump into Juggernaut in street clothes and a nice No, no, ball. no. He takes him out to, for a drink. He's like, let's go leave because yeah. you got to get out. But, but it's more that he wants to kind of teach him a lesson, too. He, you mean he wants to, like, up. talk to him about Kitty? He's yeah, going to rough and- him up? No, that's that, that's what it seems like. It was. Uh, I'll, I could try to find the panel. Well, I'm going like to interpret how he wants. He, he <laughs> was trying to teach him a lesson, I believe, but he well, doesn't get to because that's what happens to that's what happens when he runs into Juggernaut. And Juggernaut teaches him the lesson. Well, like he basically like bumps. He doesn't realize that it's Juggernaut. At Juggernaut first. Yeah. By the way, and what then, kind of what kind of weird fucked up coincidence is that? Where you're like, oh, I know, I thought on. it was and so. Then, like the juggernauts hanging out there. I read it. I went back and read it because I love this issue, and I was like, yeah, what a what a kawinky dink that old yeah. juggernaut is like sitting not only like in the bar but like two feet away from them. So but much so that Colossus can like accidentally bump into Juggernaut's chair or something. But the thing um, is, even on the cover, if, if you look at Wolverine, he's not moving a muscle. No. Nah. Like, if it was a thing that he didn't, like he wanted to protect Colossus from this, he would. they would be helping him, but he never helps. In the whole you know what happened off panel? Wolverine was like, hey, Juggy, come on, we got to teach this guy a lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Bump into your chair, but I ain't going to fucking break it up, bro. It's cool. <laughs> and it happened, right? But, but the thing that I, I like it, at the end was, even though Juggs is this crazy guy always causing problems, he pays for the bar. He throws Wolverine a stack of cash and says, give this to the owner so he can rebuild his bar. And it was kind of a, you know, Juggernaut has always been one of my very favorite characters. Oh my God. Grant, like one of the earliest, earliest things that we, I don't even know. Did you, did your brother have this book? But there was like, oh, we got into a deep Kane Marco thing in the beginning when I first met you. You love Juggernaut. Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. You love that, like him and in the connection between him and Professor X or something like that. I, ever, I love everything about him. I love how he got his powers. I love, I love right. his powers. I love it's it's awesome. Did you uh, did you hate him in uh, in Deadpool two? No, I no. thought he was great, dude. That was really? awesome. Really, probably the best Juggy ever. No, there's no story to that. It's just this guy that's like a dick. It was. I, I thought they did him pretty pretty good. Well, they did, did his too. powers right. They did him right. Yeah. Like this is who he would be, but they didn't really tell you who he was. By the way, uh, sorry to interrupt, but like, who did Colossus fall in love with? Zashi. Zashi. Who's Zashi? Zashi. Who's Zashi. She's an alien healer on the battle world of Secret Wars. Oh, well, that makes no Don't sense. Don't worry, we will talk about it. I got okay. a lot of thoughts. Okay, uh, good, good. Yeah, good. She's, no, uh, she's much more experienced than Kitty was back then. So he, yeah. got well, her. Kitty was arguably thirteen years old. So. Yeah. Arguably, <laughs> um, his experience as some weird alien creature that had sex with glasses. When you told us that you wanted this issue, Ron, by the way, good choice. I was like, perfect, because this whole run, I've been, I've been wanting to revisit this run, and I did last night. I went and looked at a lot of the Romita Jr. stuff. I, I had already recently talked about an issue where uh, it becomes like medieval times in, uh, in New York, and it's like all of the Avengers and X-Men, they're all there, and it's all like medieval times. And that was at, uh, issue 191 and 192. So that was right after, that was like eight months later or whatever. And it's just rad. Those that run of uh, X Men is a really, really great run of X Men. I thought. And it's then right after that, like, was, what's that? And then right after that was uh, Marauders. 
Right, right. And right before that is the, what's his name? Paul Smith. All the Paul Smith stuff. Mm-hmm. Which is like, mm-hmm. I love his run on X-Men too. It has some really great stuff. I, I tried to stay away from X-Men because there are so many good single issues in the X-Men. And I was trying to figure out why that was. And I think it's just because you had so many characters that you could like have a quiet moment if you wanted to and do like, oh, these guys are going to go into a bar and hang out or whatever the fuck it is. Or they're going to go into space or you could have a single issue about Lockheed or some shit, right? So it's like, they just... Right after this is the whole run of like, I believe Rogue goes yeah. Rogue and then yeah. Storm gets shot by that gun that turns it, makes her lose her mutant power and her and Forge like start kicking it. That's all right after this. Like that was it, that issue with Forge where he's got that kick-ass outfit on the cover and he's wearing that really kick-ass outfit inside. That's, that's all in the next couple issues. There's a documentary on... Um... Amazon Prime about just Chris Claremont's X-Men. And I think it's actually called Chris Claremont's X-Men. They and will it, make a fucking documentary out of anything these days. But it's fucking awesome because it's it's him and all of his editors and uh, Louise Simonson and, and her talking about being married to Walt and getting covers from him and all this shit. It's, you should watch that. That's really, really fucking interesting. What did, uh, what did you pick, uh, Granty? I was so torn. I know this is a tough one. Uh, one one of my issues. I'm gonna I'm gonna say my my runners up real quick. One oh, I, okay. I can't remember the issue number. You might though is um, where Sue Storm. It was a John Byrne run of Fantastic Four, and, and Sue Storm gets all dominatrixy and and. I know she, which one you're talking about. Yeah, and she uses her powers in a different way. Right, and I was like, that's crazy, and I love that. Another one was um, X Men Two Ten when Colossus kills Riptide. In, in the tunnels and that yeah. reading that for the first time when it first came out blew my mind because he knowing the kind of character Colossus is I, I was like oh my god like something it's inside like me died 20 something 208 maybe or 205 or something like that and is that the one where it's it's like with all the heroes around the edge of the comic and then like inside it's like a one it's with that month where they did that it where it was just so, the yeah. solo heads and who was on the cover that Wolverine Wolverine yeah yeah oh that's two. 13 incredible moment in comic history by the way is yeah. colossus walking straight up to riptide and just getting shredded but just get stepping up and snapping his neck that shit was incredible incredible oh. moment yeah but and what's rad about that too is it was so off brand for that character but he knew he had yeah. it and it yeah. broke his heart to do it and like you don't even get that until like later you know well right. and then i think after that he couldn't turn back human for a long time right yeah, because, I think he was uh, stuck. He was stuck as like a because he like for a while like in metal form, huh? And I, I think I want to say Kitty Pride was stuck in her face form too. Yeah, or oh, that definitely happened. Yeah, I remember that definitely that. happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he's and like, "Baby, I'm rock solid," and she's like, "I can't touch you." And they're like, "Move." Uh, and then my last runner-up was Astonishing X Men. A number 23 which we where, just talked about we just talked yeah. about a moment in that episode or in that issue and and uh oh my goodness i just that's that's got to be one of my very favorite single issues of anything ever between the uh, cassidy art and whedon's writing and stuff and the uh it's it's the best but there was already too much x-men out there so i had to pick something up and i picked power pack number one Wow. Whoa. I mean, you were really went around about the X-Men to go to Power Pack. I know. I mean, this issue always stands out to me. Um, always has. You've got Alex, Jack, Julie, and Katie. And they, this is, you know, so I'm like, what, 12, 13 years old when this came out. And these kids get these powers in this really cool way. And it's got kind of a, a, a callback to... Um, different like movies and genres where you know the aliens are coming down to earth and you know all kinds of crazy stuff happens and then these kids get these powers but they're they don't know how to use them and so it's it's like i wanted the powers too and then they get them and it's it's like what do you do which ones is the best power and, and how they use them and and then the way that they evolve as the stories go on and their powers sw- they switch powers um amongst the kids and then they use them differently it's so good but just to pick one issue is this one uh, because they get their powers and it's 
origin stories are my favorite. I feel yeah, like this... origin stories are the easiest thing to tell, though. I feel like after that is when it gets hard. Like, you could get, like, a really good backstory to someone, and then it's like, well, what do you do after that? And, like, Power Pack was always one of those titles that I, like, loved to begin with, but then I was like, hmm, I don't know if I love Power Pack. You know what I mean? But yeah, it got it got tough for them as time yeah. went on because you got their kids. Yeah. You know? yeah. And like they had to they like tied in with fucking mutant massacre and shit. Well, and it's Which weird because mo- most of the time they tried to keep their stories not G rated, but at least PG. Um but like you said, then they would have these weird cloak and dagger tie-ins and and Punisher and fucking Wolverine, and it's like what what can they do? And but then later, later on, they they go full G, and then they it's like they're just for kids. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you that first cover. I think it's like Power Pack, maybe fourteen or something. The one where Wolverine is holding one of the kids up and is like gonna stab them in the face. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, this is the craziest thing I've ever fucking seen. And that was the first Power Pack I ever bought. You know, yeah. I, like, I don't even know what the fuck, that, but it had Wolverine, so that was cool. I love this. I love this issue. I love this like the first whatever it was. I think it was like the first two or three where they really like they had to get rescue their parents, you know, destroy the thing that the aliens wanted, uh, right. learn how to kind of use their powers and stuff. I mean, I know they're probably doing it, but it's like this first couple issues, first three issues is May, tailor made for a movie or a, or or something. Oh, it's it's exactly. coming to, it's coming to Disney Plus. Uh, I mean, it is so tailor made for, especially like you say, like a Disney style like show, where it's like you know young kids like having to go through this. It, this would make an incredible like uh, a movie or whatever and show. An, another thing I loved about it is their powers are are diff, They're very different. Like except for light speed, which I like light speed. Flying's cool. Flying rainbows, it's right? All right, good. but it's basically it. cannonball. You yeah, know? but but G powers, um, you know, uh, gravity manipulation. The way he can use his powers is really cool. And then Mass Master is fucking amazing. Yeah, and an Energizer, how she has to absorb stuff to power up. Back then, that was some really good, like really good writing for power bases. I thought. Yeah, and just the unexpected, like kids having to use these powers. Like, you know, Energizer could basically kill somebody if she wasn't careful. Yeah, and she was always like, but I'll hurt you. And and so she always had to choose with stuff. I loved it. And I mean, you didn't pick a new universe title, Grant, just because. Ooh, I I didn't think about that. I I thought about I thought about DP seven. Yeah, but but for me, DP seven was all about the, the whole story. There wasn't. Yeah. Grant, Grant yeah. could not get that double penetration to add up to seven. So he no. was, yeah, yeah, he only got a he got about a DP three, and then that was it. He was done. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was it. Yeah, one hundred percent. No, this is a great choice. I, I really liked it. Um, let's uh, real quickly. We can uh, just. I wanted to knock out one or two of Brian's here. I know that. Um, let me see here. Where is his? Boop boop boop. I just even though he's not here because he's an asshole. Um, well, he he's picked, got family. Oh, oh, doesn't he though? This was one of his that he picked. Uh, this one I didn't remember as much, but I do remember the next one that he picked, um, which was boop, boop, boop. Where's it at? There it is. Boop. There it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Sorry. He well, picked, I think like, I got it. I had a seizure. And- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, this one he picked and I totally get why he picked this, but doesn't this fall into the mini series category? Um, no, that's a maxi series. That's an ongoing series. You didn't even know it was a mini series until that it was over a twelve, right? So, like, yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, uh, this this particular issue is one of my favorites of the run. This whole twelve issue run is one of the greatest comics I've ever read. Yeah, but I know this issue in particular is incredible because the Paris it, Clark Kent goes to jail to interview Lex Luthor, and wouldn't you know it, Parasite's also in that jail. And because Parasite's so close to Clark Kent, he starts absorbing his power, not even, you know, no, you know, nobody knows where it's, why it's happening. And the way quietly draws Parasite is fucking oh incredible. My God. And there is a fucking scene in here where it is like, well, first off, Clark Kent has to save Luther without Luther knowing that it's Clark Kent saving him. And he has to make, and Luther thinks it's him that's doing it. Right. And then like, like, 
there's a scene where they do like a down the stairs progression where they hit multiple levels. I think they do like, it's like broken down like that way. It's so fucking cool. The way they have like Clark Kent pushing Lex Luthor downstairs. And then the next panel comes and the stairs never change, but you just follow the characters down the progression of the stairs. There's Such also, a- there's that Easter egg in this fucking comic, especially that is amazing. And Lex Luthor gets one of his eyebrows burned off and then he paints it on. And then for the rest of the fucking issue, he's got this eyebrow that's like the rocks eyebrow where it's, yeah. cause he's just like, so there's some fucking weird, funny shit in this comic book that you're like, it's super serious, but they play it up and it's, it's a, it's an amazing comic. Yeah. This was a great run. And I mean, I particularly, I love the bizarro issue and I love all these issues. I think they're all fucking phenomenal. I would, for me, I would have picked the Bizarro issue. It's a tough one. I thought maybe when I saw it and I saw he picked one, I was like, ooh, is that the Bizarro one? But I can't argue with this one either. It's no. it's well, a point. I, I, I do want to say, I don't know the specifics behind that Gotham Central issue, but right. I would say that that series with Rucka and Lark is one of the best realistic superhero comics that you'll ever have. I mean, yep. it's clearly what they wanted Gotham to be, but couldn't make it happen. And they had to yeah. infuse it with stuff. But like, man, if there could be a Gotham Central show like The Wire, you'd be fucking all over it, man. It'd be so good. Yeah, and the, that comic was. We talked about that on the old podcast about being like, this is a book that we thought should have been a show right away. Like it should have been a show. It was so fucking good. Yeah. Sure. Um, all right. So my books I picked, I did have a couple runner ups. It was tough. This is a tough category. I honestly like there are probably about a hundred single issues that I could pick out that I fucking so, love. So when you guys were looking at single issues, sorry to interrupt you, John, but when you were looking, were you like, well, that issue ties into this issue. So it's not a good single issue. Or were you like, I just no. did this issue so much that it's- I was picking out individual issues that I thought were interesting. Okay. I was trying to get self-contained. I was trying to be right. like, well, what's self-contained these days? You know, it's like even that, that all-star Superman kind of has things that lead into another thing. You know, it's tough to be super self-contained. Yeah. Um, one of the ones I picked originally was going to be, um, there was a top 10 issue, top 10, eight. Uh, it's one where these two guys, these two creatures get melded together and they do a dimensional jump and somehow they get melted. It's like a horse creature. And then like another guy get like melded together and they have to like save them. I thought that was an incredible issue. I top almost ten is so good. Yeah, there's a lot of good top ten issues. Uh, I almost picked Why the Last Man, the last issue of Why the Last Man, because that issue like it destroys me still. Like I could read it today and probably cry like in the, it. The ending to that was so much better for me than the ending of Preacher. Like, and I love both, but I loved Why the Last Man's ending more. I have to say, I thought Why the Last Man still, and I have, probably have to go reread it. I haven't reread it. It's one of the greatest comics I've ever read. Like, just I've never read it. a single issue. Oh, it's what? so, oh my God. You're so lucky. I can't believe you get to read it. You should read it. No, I, it's, I, I, think, I, I think I have it on my tablet. I just got to. It, it's one of those ones. There's 60 issues. It's like Ex Machina. You know, you loved Ex yep. Machina because it, it really went like one to what, whatever it ended with, 100 or whatever. This one, like one to 60. Just a straight up story. You get it. It's like Walking Dead. If Walking Dead actually shut the fuck up and ended, you know, it's like it. Like it really. And by the end, you're like gut punch city, man. Everything is gut punch city in that. By the end of that book, I'm on now, it. Then I also uh, I picked here. I I did, now I can start sharing. I did pick. This is another runner up. I th- this is another issue that I. It's weird t- for me to say that I love this as a single issue, but. I, I fucking remember re- where I was when I read it, and I remember crying at the end of this. I this issue really wrecked me. The end when Sue Dibney dies, and he's like wrapped around her, like screaming and crying. I, this issue fucking was awesome to me. I don't know. I love this book. I love Rags Morales art. I thought it did. It was very effective for what it tried to do. I feel like DC. Did a, they took a lot of great strides to make their characters contemporary and real after Crisis, right? After right. Crisis, you're like, you get Wally West Flash, you get fucking, uh, you know, eventually a Kyle Rayner, a Green Lantern. You, you do a bunch of things where you like modernize and contemporize and you like, you feel like they're more real. The John Byrne Superman is a pretty good example of that. Um, 
but that's actually directly resulted from really from legends. Yes. It was crisis. And then legends was the one that kind of dumped. That was what justice league, John Byrne, Superman, all that shit like popped out of that, which was like a Wally so, West flash. I felt like all of that was really good, but at this point, DC was kind of losing its way. a little. Okay. Bit. So like this, by the end of this is where it all starts to go to shit because the end of this is where they all it's, the basic crux of this whole series is that they mind Zaytana mind wiped Batman. You remember that? Mm-hmm. And then that is what basically ruined DC. <laughs> it's like, Cause that led to like Batman not trusting anybody. And then like he broke up the league and it was like, after that, everything kind of went to shit really. And I, I didn't, mean, I didn't, I didn't mind that. See, here's the thing. That's Batman. That sounds like Batman to me. Like, I, I don't think that that ruined anything. I feel like, and at least took a little realism. If you're Batman and you think potentially Superman could go bad, like the villain. No, 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 no. See, that's this. not, this, this is not the, this is not that. This, that was, you're talking about like the one, the Justice League where they discover Batman has files on them and stuff. That's, that's no. a great storyline. This is where it was somebody raped somebody. Oh, Somebody raped Sue Dibney? No, who was it? Somebody yeah, raped somebody. It was Dr. Light. Dr. Light. And then, like, they came in and basically wanted to kill him, but they mind wiped him. Turns out they've been mind wiping all these villains. Yeah. And they mind wiped so, Batman. That's how, that's how they explain that in the Silver Age, all of DC's villains were stupid. Like, right. Like, well, yeah, that's how they did it, right? They that, were, yeah, they were corny. Realistically, roll in this continuity where you have these dumb dumbs and dipshits being villains. And it's because they were like, oh, we'll play with these people because we've mind wiped them. They're, they're dummies now anyway. They're harmless. I just, after this, it spiraled out of control, I felt like. And then, of course, they led into Final Crisis, which, you know, was kind of a train wreck in itself, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, I, there's, there's so much good and so much bad that happens at DC, to me. <laughs> so much bad. We just but ended like, new, the new 52 was pretty awful. Oh, fuck you. I, well, the new 52. I liked the series 52, that weekly series. No, I'm not talking about 52. I'm talking about the new 52, like when they uh, rebooted yeah. everything and Superman got a weird fucking suit. I'm All right, I didn't even pick this. Right. This isn't the issue I picked, though. All this oh. discussion about that. The issue oh. I picked was this issue. Oh, okay. Well, that's way different. That, good job. <laughs> yep. That's definitely on my list. This one, and here we go again, boys. Another Brian Bolin cover. Bam, bam, bam. I fucking love this dude. This Did first you just off. Like, bam, bam, bam. Oh, I gave you the side the the reggae sirens. Bam, bam, <laughs> bam. Uh, first off, if we were to go top fucking whatever covers of all time, this might be up there. And yeah. then as an issue. This is the issue. I, I loved Animal Man, like the first few issues of it. But once Morrison hit this, I read that this was supposed to be a four-issue limited series. And they were like, make it. We, you can do more. And so, of course, the fifth issue, he goes fucking weird and bananas already. And this issue is so crazy. And it really, like, introduced me to what Morrison could be as, like, the craziest writer out there. Because this whole issue is basically Wiley Coyote comes into our world. And Animal Man basically interacts with him and deals, you know, and like, it's all about this coyote that can't be killed. And what happens when he comes to our planet and like the there, you know, there's like this trucker that hits him in the beginning and like he can't kill him. So then the trucker thinks it's the devil. So he goes out hunting him and he just keeps killing him over and over and over again. And it all the while the coyote eventually is like, please stop and just put me out of my misery or whatever. And it's just such a fucking crazy issue because it really breaks the like, the like fourth wall of comic books. You know, it's like this whole idea of Looney Tunes coming into this world. And ironically, John, then Warner Brothers buys DC and now they can do that shit all the time now and they don't. So weird. It's really weird, but awesome. I mean, I, I think that Animal Man was Morrison's testing ground on how far he could fucking push it. I'd, I'd have to yeah. look line to see if doom patrol came after animal man i i don't know i think it's before Man, maybe after it's You're right it's actually probably after but they're both banana series they're like the peyote smoking crazy stories that you want from morrison and i feel like 
at that point he could stick a landing. Whereas like later he wasn't as good at finishing a story for did me. You, did you read seven soldiers of victory? Oh, what a nightmare that was, dude. I am oddly fascinated by that book, though. I, I almost picked one of those as one of them because I actually really, there was one book in there that I really enjoyed. I, Which that one? Is a, They're all really good. Well, the, fr- the very first one where it kind of like sets up what's going on in the whole, and then they, of course, released all those seven books or whatever. But the very first one that like was the Seven Soldiers of Victory setup book, I thought was really interesting. I, uh, you know, you, you met, I think you met Ryan Sook the same time I yes. met Sook. And I think it was before he started working on Zatanna on that series. But then, you know, he and I talked about it and I was like, what's a, what's a Grant Morrison script look like? Like, w- w- what is it? And he's just like, it's the craziest thing you've ever seen. And it's definitely genius, but it's like reality folds in on itself in a page turn. So illustrate that. And you're like, uh. yeah. And he's like, uh, okay. So he's like, I did it justice to what I thought it was and people like it. And that's all I've got. He's like, I don't I even like those books. Know. The seven soldiers books like they're. I thought it was good. No, they're all good, but it doesn't end well. The ending. No, he didn't end it well. Seven soldiers uh, book. It was like one book mini series. And then number two, right? That's how that ended. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Two was like number two. It was not good. No, it was not good by that time. No. But the rest of it's hell of good. Like yeah. all the series are dope. Yeah. All the artists are great on it. You know, it's yeah. all really cool. Um, all right. Well, that was our uh, favorite comic issue, single comic issue. What'd you guys think? Was that fun? I, I loved it, but I will say this. If you're listening to this, tell us what your favorite is down below in the comments and potentially we can try to dissect those. Cause I mean, we've read hundreds, right. if not thousands of comic books. So if you have something you want us to talk about, that's your we'll favorite. Comic book, that's right. Down below. But if it's a part of a mini series and or a single annual or something, we will not only, we will delete your comment. John has already hit mute on you. John, yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. That's right. But <laughs> yeah, no, we uh, thank everybody for watching our episodes and uh, you know, our numbers are going up, which is good. Tell a friend we're going to release more of these little eight minute grant game type episodes for everybody. Yeah, so if, I hope you guys like that. People have funny uh, stories and links that they want us to, to comment, talk about, you know, send us a link. Yeah, I mean, and definitely send us uh, comments and, and links about current events because we live in your world too. We, we don't live in, in this weird savant land. I mean, we do. I'm in a parallel dimension where pigs are our rulers. <laughs> uh, I don't even know where to go from there. Right. John, do you want to Go eat some bacon. Show them who's boss. <laughs> it's unlimited bacon land. I love it. All right, All right everybody. Oh, hey. wait. Uh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Brian wants to say something. Hang on real quick here. Uh, Brian, what did you think about the uh, episode? <laughs> Fuck it. I love it. Oh, well, I love it, man. I can't get it up. <laughs> oh, well, I love Brian, it, man. I can't up. get it up. <laughs> Brian right. Robots is the best. All right. I will say this. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us uh, on uh, on fucking uh, uh, on and also iTunes now. I mean, we're, now we're on iTunes, Ron. Right? I mean, we've got our show back up as a podcast. Is that really for real? I feel like uh, so. Like Ron is in charge of our like podcast now, but I feel like he's like scared of the internet. So he's like, eh, guys, I don't want to put it up on iTunes yet because they may find out my social oh my security God. number. I need a logo that will work with I'm iTunes on. I'm working and on Spotify and okay. then it'll go right, right away. It. You will have it by tomorrow. All right. So you can find us on Twitter. No, no. On Instagram. Sure. The Geek Savants. Nobody's We're on there. Facebook, The Geek Savants. We're on YouTube. You're already watching the show. And then you can find us on, on Apple iTunes. Uh, subscribe. Find, us on find us on the gram. I just put a picture of Grant without his clothes on up uh, the other day, last night. Is it, like, is it like literally like a Sasquatch walking through the forest? Because Maybe you should go check it out. Fair enough. Go check it out. I, I'm naked in it. So. <laughs> oh, there's a story there, but we'll, we'll get there next week. All next right. week. All right. All right, boys. Well, you guys have a great week. I'm sure I'll hear about you guys on the text messages. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good to see you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay. okay. Okay.
Let's go, Ecto. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Hey, yo, sinister under park lights. Hopeless devotion. Minister 